Today I'm going to show you my workflow for speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. Just so you know, this is a lecture from my DaVinci Resolve course, which you can find linked in the description down below. Without further ado, let's dive in and learn a little bit about speed ramping in DaVinci. Let's go. In this section, we're going to cover how to do speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. So let's make a new timeline. So we're going to go to our timelines folder here, right click in the empty space, new timeline, and we'll call this speed ramp demo and make sure that we're using the frame rate that we want. So on average, if we uncheck project settings and go to format, we should generally be creating our timelines in 24 frames per second. So that's okay, we don't need to change anything, but I'll set this to uh, 3840 by 2160 because that's just a good thing to do. Hit create and we're now in this new timeline. Now I have this folder here of all this footage and if I click and drag it in, we have all this audio that we're gonna mute because we don't need the audio, we have this footage of my girlfriend and I at an event called the Labyrinth Masquerade Ball, and I shot most of it in 120 frames per second. So we can see that the footage is a little shaky, a little weird, and a little gross. I'm gonna pause one second and just add a quick color grade to this. So after a quick second to add a color grade so it looks a little bit more colorful and saturated, we have our footage and it is playing back in real time. But if you eventually do this long enough, you'll develop an eye to see what kind of footage is 24 frames per second versus 120 frames per second, 60 frames per second, etc. And the biggest thing is motion blur. The motion blur of this footage, it looks a little bit more choppy and jittery because it was filmed at a higher frame rate. So to fix this, first we're gonna select all the footage and backspace, get rid of it out of our timeline. And then we're gonna go to our media pool and select the footage that is in slow motion. And you can right click and go to clip attributes and set it to 24 frames per second. You're basically telling DaVinci to manually interpret this footage to a different frame rate. So we're setting it to 24, just like that. Now you can see this as well. If you right click on the columns here, we can also see the FPS. Let's just get rid of that. And we can see our frames per second like so. And if we scroll over FPS right there, just for posterity's sake, I can undo that. We can see the FPS per clip, but let's just redo that. So everything is now 24. And now if I click and drag this into my timeline, let's just keep the audio muted. We're not gonna need that. If we play this back, it is now playing back in a much more slower, more elegant, you could say epic playback speed. Now, I did lose that color grade because we did take these clips out of the timeline, so I'm just gonna add this to the group that it belongs really quick, and now we have our beautiful footage that is still uncolor graded, but hey, we're in slow motion. Now, what if we want to create some speed ramping and adjust the playback so certain sections play faster than others without doing cuts? So I'm gonna jump over to this part of the timeline right here where I have this cool looking dragon and these dancers on the stage. This is a really fun event to shoot. And let's say I wanted this one section along with maybe this full section right here playing at real speed. So what I would do is let's just move these clips over in time so that we're not really worrying about everything else in our timeline and just scooch it. So now we have this one clip and I will color grade that to green or label it as green so that we are working on just this one clip. So to adjust your speed ramp properties, you're gonna right click on the footage and go to retime curve here. And then you're gonna see a couple extra options on this clip open up. We're also going to enable retime curve. So I'm sorry, retime controls, which is what you see here and then retime curve. So now we get this curve that we can adjust our keyframes of our animation. So we have this playback nice and slow, and let's say right here we wanna add a point where it speeds up. If we look at this little 100% right here, if we click on the drop down menu, we can do something called add a speed point. So this is basically adding a keyframe to this one clip right here. Now I can go in and go to this one spot and say change speed to let's say 400%. And I know I shot this in 120 frames per second, so it would technically need to be playing back at 500% to play back in real time, but 400% is fine. And now I can just scooch this out and over, and now I have this clip. 
playing back. Oh. I lied, it wasn't 400%. It should actually be 250% because this was shot in 60 frames per second, not 120. So yes, that is more natural for sure. But we can see here that there's a little bit of a hiccup. It's sort of just like bonks right into the playback speed. Now, let's do another thing really quick and add another speed point and let's go back down to 100%. So now it's gonna create this little ramp right here. Now, if I want to create a little bit of an ease in between these speed ramps right here, what I can do is I can just select the ease button and now we get this little curve that we can pull out, pull in. And the benefit about working here is now we can adjust this speed to be almost anything we want. So now we're at 300 right there. The issue is that the height of this graph is not super high. So I can go to this little number right here, this percentage and increase the height of the graph. And then I can just increase this even more. And now we can see that these two keyframes are squashing together. They're getting smaller. They're crunching this time playback into a shorter period. Now I'm gonna go back and make sure that both keyframes have a little bit of ease on it. So let's just select you guys right here. Ease, oh, come on. Here. Come on, dude. Do what I want you to do. There we go. Because those keyframes were stacked on top of each other, we're getting a weird effect. So now what I can do is I can either select this keyframe and drag it over. So now we're gonna get a faster playback during this one section. Or what I could do is I could also take these top bars. So this little bar right here indicates the icon. And if I take this and I squash it, it's gonna de-increase the speed rate in between these two keyframes. Or if I move this bar, it's gonna change the position relative to the clip. So we're gonna see this section for longer as a faster playback. And obviously it's getting real hairy right there and a little funky, but basically what I'm trying to say is with a lot of these properties, you can adjust the curve, you can change the position or how fast things play back all in the edit page, which is super nice. And most other video editing software will let you do all this. This is how you would do it in DaVinci Resolve. Now, just like the other animation properties in the previous lecture, if we select this little drop down menu, we can see our retime frame and retime speed. Now, sometimes, and depending on the version of DaVinci that you're using, it'll be showing you the retime frame, not the retime speed. You need to make sure you're on the retime speed to adjust any of these keyframe properties. Now, I'm just going to go in and resize this graph up. Play that back. Sure, it's doing exactly what I want. Let's say we're all done. We don't need to see this anymore. We can select the little X button right here to get rid of that property. And now we're still gonna get this playback. We're just not showing the retime speed playback controls. We can also unselect our little keyframe button right there and we can hide all that. So when we're done doing our speed ramp, we can hide all those settings so we're not taking up too much space in our timeline. And if we ever need to go back to that, we can just go to our retime curves and retime controls just like so. In case we need to go back and edit that shot and adjust any of the properties in our timeline in our sequence to match the playback speed that we want. Now, the last thing that's worth mentioning is that when you hide all these properties and you don't need to see them anymore, if you see a clip with this little speedometer button right down here in the lower left-hand corner of the clip, then you will know that it has had its speed properties changed. But because all of these other clips have been interpreted to 24 frames per second, it doesn't give us any adjustment on, or doesn't, doesn't give us that icon until we start actually playing with that retime curve and retime control so we can just go in retime controls speed that up and then hide that stuff just like so and now we get that icon so that is how you would do speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve and then the last section of this chapter we will talk about importing CG footage 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on speed ramping in DaVinci Resolve. And if you're confused by any part of this, you can find links to my DaVinci Re Resolve course, links to the course down below to which we will cover all the professional and personal workflows that I use for making content for my clients and also my personal vlogs, YouTube videos, etc. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down for that as well. And I will leave you with the Final tip, one gram per pound of body weight to make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.